In this question, we are told that Ali Musa and Yusuf shared 420,000 Naira in the ratio 358 respectively. We are to find the sum of Ali and Yusuf's shares. Now, this is a classical example of a question in ratio and proportion. And we can just note the ratio of their division to be 358 A for Ali, M for Musa, and Y for Yusuf. Now, the total of this ratio, which is 3 plus 5 plus 8, that will be 8 plus 8, that's 16. So, we ask, we, if we just, the best, the, a, a simple way to just look at this is that the three of them, that's 16, Ali and Yusuf, if you just want to consider their own share, the ratio of their proportionality, they are going to share in the ratio Ali is 3, Yusuf is 8, so that will be 3 plus 8, that is Helen. So you can just do a simple relationship between the two that the total that the three of them shared, that total ratio amounting to 16, amounts to 420,000, okay? But then we are looking for the amount that Ali and Yusuf shares, but Ali and Yusuf their own ratio, if you are taking them together, actually is ratio 11, okay? It will amount to the value that we are looking for, which we can call X. So if you relate this together, we can say 16 is equal to 420,000. 16 is 420,000 error. 11 is equal to X. And just as simple as that, if you say we want to cross multiply, we'll have 16X is equal to 11 times 420 naira and to get x we divide both sides by 16 so we can see it is 11 times 420 thousand naira divided by 16 and if you bring in our calculator to solve that 11 times 420 thousand divided by 16 that's 280,750 naira so the Sum of Hali and Yusuf's share is 288,750 naira. That's the sum of Hali and Yusuf's share. Now, in this question, we're asked to solve 2 multiplied by 1 over 8 raised to power x is equal to 32 raised to power x minus 1. Now, this is a classical example in indices, and we're going to be using the rules of indices to solve them. And if you want to take that, now, we are seeing 2, 8, and 32. If you are very observant, we will see that this will amount to um, 2 raised to some powers. First and foremost, we should aim at using the same base since we have identified that this is a problem in indices. So for 8, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 raised to power 3. Then 32 is 2 multiply by itself in 5 places, and that is 2 raised to power 5. So instead of writing 8 and 32, we can write 2 raised to power 3 and 2 raised to power 5 in our equation that we are trying to solve. Okay? So, again, the other rule of indices that we can employ is that 1 over A is equal to A raised to power minus 1. So, 1 over 8 will be 8 raised to power minus 1, but 8 is 2 raised to power 3. Okay? So we can say it's 1 over 2 raised to power 3, or raised to power x is 2 raised to power 5, multiplied by x minus 1. So if you just want to now use that law of indices, instead of two raised, 1 over 2 raised to power 3, we can have 2 raised to power minus 3, then all multiplied by x. Okay? So now, from law of indices, we can also open these brackets to multiply the power. So we have 2 multiply by this other entry now be 2 raised to power minus 3x is equal to 2 raised to power 5 then multiply by x minus 1 notice i'm putting the whole power in bracket it's not 5x minus 1 it's 5 into bracket x minus 1 all right so you can further work on this now we're having two bases two in two places and we're having to multiply by each other. The law of indices um, 
in guiding us will tell us a raised to the power m multiplied by a raised to the power n is a raised to the power m plus n. Just a single base, then multiply n. We add the powers, okay? So if you want to apply that in this particular case, instead of writing 2 multiplied by 2 raised to the power minus 3, yes, we can write only 1, 2. Then the first one, the power is 1. Then the second one, the power is minus 3x. So we don't want to leave out the negative sign. It is minus 3x. Then in the second place, we can open the bracket to be 5 raised to the power x minus 5. So now, we can see that we have the same base 2. And they, those, since the bases are equal, we can knock out the base to leave us with the power. And we have 1 minus 3x is 5x minus 5. If we collect like terms, we have 1 plus 5 is equal to 5x plus 3x. 1 plus 5 is 6, 5x plus 3x is 8x. So we just divide both sides by 8. We can find the value of our x to be x will now be 3 over 4. And that is our solution to the question. In the diagram that we are given below, PQRS is a quadrilateral, and we are told that angle PQR is the same as angle PRS, and that is 90 degrees, and PQ is 3, and QR is 4, and PS is 3 centimeters. Now, we are told it is a quadrilateral, and we are to find the area of this quadrilateral. Now, we identified the angles P. Q, R, okay, then we have the angle P, R, S, we are told that these two, they are 90 degrees. So, how best can we go ahead to find the area of this quadrilateral? Now, ideally, this is a shape in which the parameters that we are given are only decide P, Q, Q, R, and P, S, and we are to find the area of that quadrilateral, okay? To find the area of this quadrilateral, we can look at it as a breakdown and we can see that that is actually two triangles. So the area will be the sum of the area of the triangles. First, the triangle PQR that's being shown in red. Okay, that's triangle PQR. Then the area of the other triangle, triangle PSR. Let me show that in blue. Okay, this is the other triangle. If you can find the area of the two triangles and sum them together, that can give us the area of the quadrilateral. So our task is now to find the area of the triangle. Now the formula for the area of a triangle is half base times height. Okay, and for these triangles, we can just express that as for PQR, half multiplied by the base. The base is QR and the height is PQ. So half multiplied by QR times PQ. That's for the first triangle. And then the second triangle, the base will be PR. Okay, so we have half multiplied by PR multiplied by the height. The height will be um, RS. Okay, so we have the base PR and the height RS. But we don't know the base and we don't know the height. So the first thing we need to solve for is to look for the base, the line PR, and the height, the line RS. Now, how do we go about that? We can use our Pythagoras theorem to solve for this. For example, from the triangle PQR, you can see that the hypotenuse, the square of the hypotenuse, that is PR raised to power 2, is equal to the square of the opposite PQ raised to the power 2 plus the square of the adjacent. That's QR raised to the power 2. This is Pythagoras theorem. So we can find PR raised to the power 2 to be 3 raised to the power 2 plus 4 raised to the power 2. That's 9 plus 16, which is 25. So that PR will be the square root of 25, and that is 5 centimeters. So we can input the value for our PR to know that we have our PR to be 
five centimeters, which you can use to get the area of triangle PSR. But that's not the only thing we are needing. We also need the side SR. Now, from the from the triangle PSR, we can see that PS raised to the power two. PS is the hypotenuse. Okay, the longest side is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. PR raised to the power two plus RS raised to the power two. We just got our PR to be five centimeters. So that's no longer an unknown. We can write it out. This is five centimeters. Okay. So we are looking at the side RS and we are using this Pythagoras theorem to find the side RS. So if you put in the value for PS and PR, that will be 13 raised to power 2 is equal to 5 raised to power 2 plus RS, which we are looking for, raised to power 2 now. So if you rearrange this, we can take 5 raised to power 2 to the other side to be 13 raised to power 2 minus 5 raised to power 2. 13 raised to power 2 is 169. 5 raised to power 2 is 25. If we subtract 25 from 169, we have 144. So that RS is the square root of 144, and that is 12 centimeters. Now, since we've gotten RS to be 12 centimeters, we can input it appropriately in our diagram that the line RS which is the height of the triangle, PSR, is 12 centimeters. So, having all these parameters down, we can go ahead to find the area of the quadrilateral to be half multiplied by QR, QR is 4, multiplied by PQ, PQ is 3, okay, plus half multiplied by PR, PR is 5, multiplied by RS, RS is 12. We can just use 2 to cut appropriately, and this will give us 6, plus 30 okay 5 times 6 is 30 and that will be 36 centimeters square so the area of the quadrilateral is 36 centimeters square three red balls five green balls and the number of blue balls are put together in a sack one ball is picked at random from the sack if the probability of picking a red ball is one over six we are asked to find the number of blue balls in the sack and the probability of picking a green ball. If you want to depict this just for explanation purposes, let's say we have red balls, green balls, and we also have blue balls. Okay, I thought that the number of red balls we have five red balls, we have three red balls, five green balls, and we don't know the number of blue balls. We just to the number of blue balls, all are put together in a sack. Okay, we have our sack, and now if one ball is picked at random, one ball is picked at random, the probability of picking a red ball is 1 over 6. This is a question in probability, and interpreting this question will help us to solve it because it's not as tough as you might think if you are really looking at it. Now, from the statement that we are giving, that the probability of picking a red ball is 1 over 6, what is the meaning of that? We know that from the definition of probability, probability generally is defined as our desired outcome divided by all the total possible outcomes that can come out of what, whatever it is that we are doing. Okay? Now, we can apply that to this particular case scenario. When we are told that the probability of picking a red ball is 1 over 6, that means we can say the probability probability of picking a red ball probability of r is 1 over 6 but from the definition that i just gave we are expecting that that should be number of red balls over the total number of balls the desired outcome is red so the number of red balls the total possible outcome is the total number of balls okay we don't know the total number of balls yet but we can actually use this to find but we know that this is going to relate to what is the total number of balls the total number of red balls, that's 3. But the total number of balls, we can say is T. We don't know. So, that means 1 over 6 is 3 over T. 3 over the total. And if you cross multiply, that means the total number of balls in the bag, in the sack, is 3 times 6. And that is 18 balls. So, we have 18 balls in total. And um, 3 of them, they are red. 5 of them, they are green. So, we can find the number of blue balls in the sack. As we are asked in the question A. So we can say that from 
the analogy that we have gotten that the total number of balls is 18. The number of blue balls will be equal to the total number of balls. That total number of balls that we have gotten to be 18 minus the sum of the green and the red balls. Okay? It will be minus the number of red balls plus the number of green balls. Now, we just got the total number of balls to be 18. We've been told in the question that we have three red balls and five green balls. So that will give us 18 minus 8, and 18 minus 8 is 10. So the, to the number of blue balls in the sack, are, the number of blue balls is 10. 10 is the number of blue balls. So our second question, the probability of picking a green ball. Probability, like we defined before, is the desired outcome over the total possible outcomes. Now, in this case, that will be number of green balls over the total number of balls that are in the sack. And we've been told that we have five green balls, okay? Then the total number we have gotten to be 18. So, the probability of picking a green ball is 5 over 18. 